Certainly one of the most visually stunning monsters in the game. Unfortunately, the engine of the gods, Bark, is a little bit uh, meaner than its bite. And what I mean by that is that this orbital bombardment strike here, which looks absolutely amazing, burning alignment, doesn't do a ton of damage. It does a pretty decent amount of damage. Um, moderate magical and fire damage is a good way of putting it. Good against armor, though, I think is a little bit misleading. It's potentially not that great against armor. But here we've got a replay from Tequila Sunset. He's taking two engines of the gods up against vampire counts, led by Nakai as well. So already this is a definite stamp of approval for me on this build. Uh, Saurus Warriors with uh, shields and one Saurus Spear without shields. Uh, we've got Skink Priest of Heavens. Uh, on the Vampire Count side, Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. We've got the Regiment of Renown Mortis Engine, a Banshee, Necromancer on a cart, with just uh, no spells, just extra winds of magic. Skeleton Warriors, Skeleton Spears, plenty of chaff, and a whole bunch of Vargeist, which I have been seeing more of lately. Let's see how they do here. But to Engine of the Gods, so potentially against the Vampire Counts, a few things come into play. Not only does it have the Orbital Bombardment, of course, but a couple of other abilities as well. should be noted that it's an Ancient Stegodon, so it does get a little bit more armor and weapon strength than the regular uh, Stegodon type. Uh, it does have this Arcane Configuration, which is just kind of there. Extra Power Recharge Rate is nice, but it's not super impactful. Extra Power Reserve is definitely better. Um, and in game three, I think this is changing so that there will be a constant recharge rate, so likely these abilities will just give you power reserve, I'm not sure. Anyway, this portent of warding here, we can see that this has been spread out between these two units. Extra 5% damage resistance, which isn't a ton, but in a very attritional fight, like up against the vampire counts, every tiny little bit helps, and especially considering this mortis engine now here draining out a lot of this infantry. Uh, but here we go, Orbital Bombardment Strike. Let's see if I eat my own words on the damage here. This is a pretty ideal scenario, and okay, maybe the damage is pretty legit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, maybe the damage is pretty legit against light armor targets. I just don't remember it being that impactful the last time I used it. Maybe it's changed. I don't know. Maybe I need to have another look at it here, but Skeleton Spears, I mean, that was a pretty much ideal hit on both of them, and then again, that's a relatively cheap unit, so... While it does look very impressive and actually does kill the unit, the actual damage output is not great. But uh, I think there's just been successive casts of the Gaze of Nagash here that have done a lot of damage to this one Ancient Stegodon. Not the greatest situation, but Nakai is here now. Single entity combat, we've got the Banshee and the <laughs> Corpse Cart Necromancer, who does actually have like 300, eh, yeah, 300 weapon strength, I think, when he's not poisoned. Um, Anyway, Blood Dragon's getting pretty low, though. He's getting beat up pretty bad by Nakai, so he's got to be careful. Looks like we've got healing on Nakai, the Rev Crystal. Uh, interesting, not hitting the Ancient Steg with that. Ancient Steg, though, still 2,700 HP, so that's it's got a decent amount. But this Mortis Engine here, I think, is making a pretty big mistake. It's managed to maneuver itself in the triangle of these three monsters. And, you know, single entity combat, uh, I say often on my channel. Numbers win single entity combat. This is now a 4v2. I mean, I guess technically the Banshee is also in there. But generally, Mortis Engines are one of the very few exceptions to that rule where if on the Vampire Count side, yes, it's an extra single entity that can, in a pinch, help in a single entity fight. But this thing is primarily meant to drain blobs of infantry and cavalry, multi-model units, and just really shouldn't be in single entity combat as much as you can avoid it, and so here, just getting triangled, just full-on chokeholded, uh, maybe even pentagoned, is that a thing? 5v1 almost, if you consider the three monsters. Uh, Nakai, I guess, is there a fifth? Yeah, the Skink Priest is here also. Okay, so it is a full-on pentagon beatdown, and uh, Mortis Engine just goes down as a result. And there's going to be a few more orbital bombardments on station. I do believe this is a, not an unholy lodestone corpse cart, so it's not actually providing AoE healing to all of the basic units here. But a little bit of healing from Blood Dragon. At this point, he himself is very low, but he's just about finished off this Ancient Stegodon. Got his heart render and everything going, although it didn't seem like he got too many hits on the important targets there. Both skeletons trying to avoid that, and let's see, one more old orbital bombardment on some skeletons that are already crumbling. <laughs> and the Vampire Counts player 
throws in the towel, which is understandable. Loss of the Mortis engine there. Those Saurus are just going to grind you down anyway. So, yeah, I mean, how much did they actually do here? Well, they certainly got some impressive kill totals. Does help clean out Chaff, it seems. Um, yeah, I, I guess maybe we do a little bit of testing here and actually look at the damage against some armored units, perhaps. Um, but definitely pretty good value on both of them. And granted, some of that's also coming from beating down uh, single entities in melee combat. Nakai also, though, trades very well for himself. Uh, almost... I guess not quite almost loses it. He's, he's healthy enough at the end of the day. Definitely took some damage. Took it on the chin a little bit. Saurus Spears, though, 1559. Honestly, like, the regular Saurus are pretty good here, but I would say this is one of the matchups where you just want to take a front line of Saurus Spears. This one and Bretonia, I think, are the two matchups where you want to just take Saurus Spears rather than regular Saurus as much as you can. Um, I mean, Vampire Counts rely very heavily on their monsters. They might go Graveguard with great weapons here, but you can make your Saurus trade well enough, and with your own monsters, you just roll over the Graveguard anyway, so... Yeah, uh, anyway, back to the Ancient Stegodon here, Engine of the Gods. So let's just take a look at these different Stegodon variants we have access to. Um, so there's four Stegodon variants uh, with kind of ascending costs. You've got the two basic, Feral Stegodon and the Bow Stegodon. Uh, feral Stagonon, of course, the cheapest. Also has the highest charge bonus, interestingly enough, kind of as a Feral, um, but can go out of control. Actually very cost-effective at 1,100 points. Arguably should be like 12 to 1,300, but let's not go there. Uh, you see this guy pretty often in Wide Lizardman builds. Uh, the Bow Steg is an artillery piece. It's kind of a weird one. Applies poison. Uh, it has a pretty good missile attack. It's not great. Out of the monstrous artillery pieces, it's kind of the weirder ones because... Yeah, I mean, it's like a bolt, right? A giant bolt, which uh, doesn't do that much area of effect damage. And, it, like, it doesn't have an explosion, right? It's just a giant chunk. Definitely can be pretty good against certain single entities, but, uh, yeah. The fire rate's also not amazing either. It's just one single artillery, right? It's okay, is what I'm trying to say. You don't see it super often, but it can be good in niche scenarios. Um, Ancient Stegodon has kind of the machine gun on its back, and again, we get the Ancient status giving an extra 60 weapon strength, more HP, additional 20 armor, which is pretty important. Some of you guys who have seen my recent videos, I talked about this, uh, armor, basically the more you go above 100, the better, and so that, like, 110 to 130 is actually a pretty good upgrade. Uh, minus, uh, plus 20 armor, like, from, say, I don't know, 20 to 40, doesn't matter that much. This, though, matters a pretty substantial amount due to the way the armor math works. Um, you also get extra leadership as well. Less melee attack, which is interesting to me. Um, but yeah, the extra weapon strength, 60 weapon strength, also pretty substantial. And the machine gun thing here, the machine gun skinks on the back can definitely dish out some serious pain up close. 115 range on that. And then the Ancient Stegodon still has the Howda. It's the same Howda that you would find on a Bastilodon variant, right? Uh, just the Skinks throwing Poison Javelins. Doesn't do too much damage, but it is essentially area of effect poison, which is really nice. Um, yeah, uh, same stats as the Ancient Stegodon. You just pick up these special abilities in, in exchange for 100 points and the machine guns. Again, our, uh, again, arcane configuration. Okay, will definitely be better in game three. This 5% damage resistance is also, again, okay. Especially in attrition-based fights. Can definitely work in your favor. Clearing out chaff, burning alignment. Uh, I might be curious to try this against Bretonia, perhaps. Even just to displace peasants. Uh, like a peasant archer line. Or even more preferably, try and take some peasants out. Even... Men-at-Arms in melee, I'm not really sure. Not that Men-at-Arms are a big problem, but just clearing out the Bretonia Chaff a little bit quicker. Potentially some some use case there I could see. Tomb Kings as well, given that it does fire damage. I mean, like, against the Kepper Guard, this would probably be very cost-effective, actually. But maybe I eat my words a little bit, and maybe its bark is... Uh, its bite is actually as bad as its bark. Yeah, I almost, almost screwed that up. Anyway... Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this one. Definitely a very fun unit. Uh, thanks again to Tequila Sunset for sending that one in. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.